Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Gayla Tia Strong. After getting a 100% on my MPTE, I co-founded SPT with me to help DPT students who are just about to take their NPTE actually understand content versus just memorize everything. If you enjoy what you see, check out sptwithme.com for our three and six hour course. Now onto what you're actually here for, let's talk about the Berg Balance Scale. Just like with any other functional outcome measure, you have to use them for a purpose. So for the Berg, the purpose could be to either prove or disprove that someone is a fall risk or to assess how a person's static and dynamic balance are. Once the test is complete, you've added up all the scores, understand that you can actually separate the scores into mobility levels. For example, a person might be safest with a lower score with uh, moving with a wheelchair or they should be walking with an assistive device or they can walk independently However for the test you don't need to know the specifics Just know that anything less than 45 out of 56 is considered a fall risk With functional outcome measures. We have some that are very specific condition specific for example, Fugelmeyer, you're going to use it for people who have had a stroke specifically. However, with the Berg Balance Scale, among others, you can use this outcome measure to address plenty of populations. So for example, it could be someone who has had a stroke, spinal cord injury, amputation, TBI, OA, vestibular, Parkinson's disease, etc. This is a test that is purely used to assess whether an adult person, so anyone over 18 years old, is at risk of falling, regardless of their diagnosis, even if they don't have a diagnosis in particular. Components of the test itself, there are 14 tasks. Now note that the use of an assistive device is not allowed to get a true value for this test. Now, I'm not going to waste your time with reading these over. Honestly, the best way for you to learn is just to do the actual activity yourself. Now, you'll notice that none of these actually require moving significantly outside of your base of support, which is how this test is addressing both static and a little bit of dynamic balance, like we mentioned before, as a purpose for the test. The most amount of moving is for example, rotating just 360 degrees and picking something up from the floor and maybe the functional reach aspect of it. Again, with any functional outcome measure, you have to make sure that it is appropriate for your patient. So on the test and even in real life, you have to really consider, is this test appropriate for what I want to prove, right? So a test might be too difficult or way too easy for a patient. That's where floor and ceiling effects occur. And additionally, for this one in particular, remember that your patient cannot use an assistive device during this test. So think about a person who has had a T6 complete spinal cord injury and they can't stand without an assistive device. This would not be appropriate for this particular person. My goal with SPT with me is to make sure that you actually understand what is important to know, what might not be as important to know, and to actually make sense of what you're learning. So if you enjoy this content, Feel free to check out sptwithme.com for again our three and six hour mini NPTE course to help you pass. If you want to learn a little bit more about the Berg Balance Scale, check this resource out.